Hi everyone. Um, I believe the fathers and maybe some of the mothers as well uh, are here together with us for this conversation. I want to say hi to everyone. My name is Simon Bevy. I'm part of Transform Nations and I'm a daddy. I'm a daddy of uh, three children, uh, two teenagers and one preteen. And um, it's a blessing uh, for us to have this conversation. And so I am just glad that we can talk. Um, conversations about fatherhood. I am very passionate about fatherhood, but before I even get into it and get ahead of myself, uh, let me also just say that um, uh, Transform Nations, uh, we do different programs around the family, around leadership, and around community transformation. And so around family, we do programs for men, like Man Enough. And some of you, I'm sure you've already done Man Enough or your relatives have. And we are actually doing one online currently. Um, uh, for those of you ladies maybe who are watching this and you'd like your sons or husbands uh, or other um, uh, significant others, to do it. Um, uh, so we have Man Enough for Men. Uh, we have Intentional Dads for Fathers, which is what we are talking about today. And then we have uh, Intentional Mothers uh, uh, with a special emphasis on mothers of sons, but also mothers of daughters now uh, are part of it, Intentional Moms. Uh, and so for the ladies out there, or your wives uh, or your moms, uh, those who need uh, to get involved with that as well you can get details uh, and we do programs for boys as well which is mentoring uh, the young men to become responsible real men uh, so those are some of the programs we do and we just want to uh, have a conversation today. Uh, we will not take too long. I'm just going to begin by talking about the importance of fathers. I was beginning to say I'm very passionate about fatherhood. And part of it is just my own journey growing up without a dad and seeing the gaps of that. And how uh, one uh, then uh, grows along uh, with development, develop, developmental gaps uh, uh, that have to be filled in. Uh, later in life when they grow up without a dad. Our parents are important, mothers are crucially important, fathers are crucially important uh, during the growth of a child. And so fatherhood is very important. I know many of you have had the discussion that there seems to be a boyhood crisis. Uh, and I always say it's not really a boyhood crisis, it's a fatherhood crisis. Uh, because of the roles of a father, and I'll just mention three for now before I jump into the five habits of highly effective fathers. Um, number one, fathers model masculinity to the society. You see, fatherhood uh, is like uh, the epitome of masculinity. Uh, you know, uh, be, uh, masculinity begins in the baby boy, and then in a boy, and then in a man, and then in a husband, and then in a father, uh, who becomes an elder. And so the example, the ultimate example of what masculinity looks like to the watching children, to the watching society is really and uh, captured by fathers. Whatever they do, however they speak, whichever way they relate, uh, that's a model of masculinity that the society uh, begins to paint uh, and captures, especially for the boys. And so fathers are crucially important in uh, uh, modeling what masculinity looks like uh, to the sons, but also to the daughters, because the daughters are looking at their daddies and say, one day I want to marry a man and I want him to be as good as dad. In fact, most ladies marry their dad, so to speak. Uh, one of the things that my wife, Sophia, uh, got to like me about, I remember those early dates. Uh, and one day she told me, you know, you treated me exactly like my dad. And, and, and from that then on, she be, gave serious consideration to becoming my wife uh, because she had seen her dad and how the dad treated the mom and treated them in the home. And so she had gotten this model of masculinity that masculinity serves. And so when I served her uh, and did something that reminded her of the dad, then now she was beginning to feel this is something I could live with. And so uh, modeling masculinity is an important thing for fathers. 
Number two is modeling authority as well. Uh, you know, uh, fathers are seen as ultimate authority uh, or uh, the, the next authority be, uh, you know, besides, besides mom. Uh, so mom has authority at home, uh, but dad also uh, is an authority in the house. And so the way dad behaves as an authority in the house, especially male authority, uh, determines how children and society look at male authority authority uh, in public and politics and in many other places. And so we model what it means to be a leader. We model what it means to be a person in authority, uh, especially male authority uh, to the children around us and to the young ones. And thirdly, we get to play a very important role, uh, which I call calling out. Um, as fathers, we get to be the alternative voice. Uh, uh, you know, right from the womb, moms get to talk to their children and they are born and they are being breastfed and mom is talking to them a lot more regularly than dads do. Uh, and so children are very tight with their moms in those early days because of the nurturing uh, that happens there off, uh, they're around. Um, but later, you know, the process of mothering is actually a process of releasing the children. Uh, progressively. Uh, so a child is released from the womb, then released wind from breastfeeding, uh, and then released from, uh, you know, being too close to mom, so that eventually the child becomes uh, their own person. And during that time, around 8, 11, uh, 10, when they're becoming their own person, they, they need to hear another voice other than mom, because they've been hearing mom's voice, and they need another voice to affirm them, to give them identity, to call them out, to tell them who they are. Uh, and so I like to say that men call out, uh, fathers call out uh, the man in a boy. They get to affirm masculinity in the boy. But also men get to call out femininity in a girl. Uh, my daughter, when I tell her you're beautiful, when I tell her, uh, well, I love the way you're kind, I'm affirming, uh, you know, uh, a weight and uh, quality of femininity inside of her. I've had to talk and counsel with many women who felt they were not pretty or they were not worth much because their fathers told them so. And so fathers have a weight in calling out masculinity and femininity uh, in their children. So fathers, you're crucially important. Very important. Uh, take yourself seriously. Realize you're not just there to fill in the gap. Uh, you're actually doing an important role as a parent and you need to make sure that you create the time to do it and you become intentional in doing it. There's a lesson I've learned in my uh, uh, 18 years of uh, being a father is that fatherhood doesn't happen. Uh, automatically. It must be planned for, it must be intentional, it must be something I create time for, it must be something I think about, it must be something I give my attention to. It doesn't just happen. Uh, if it just happens, it's not going to be great. Uh, but when you get intentional about it and plan for it and create, you, you, you know, organize yourself around it, then you get to earn something out of it. I believe that as you join us, uh, you, you're texting and saying where you're joining us from uh, and, and make some comments as well. We'd like to hear from you. And um, as we continue, uh, I'm gonna be introducing at the end uh, the program we do called Intentional Dads. And we're launching one this week right away after this session. Uh, it's gonna be a five week online course. And in case you're interested in that, feel free to sign up right now. Uh, there's um, uh, already uh, some link that is provided uh, down the Facebook page and uh, you'll be able to sign up and then you'll get more details even as we continue. But feel free to already go ahead and sign up or sign up your friend uh, or the father of your children. So let me now talk about the five, the five uh, uh, habits of highly effective fathers. Uh, those of you are mothers or you have uh, mothers around you, I actually gave a talk a few about a week ago about five habits of highly effective mothers and it's pretty different in uh, content from what I'm going to talk about, but you can direct uh, them to watch. Um, it's still on uh, this Facebook page. Uh, if you uh, uh, scroll down there, you will find it. So let me jump into it. Five habits of highly effective fathers. Uh, 
Number one, they intentionally connect with their children, intentionally connect uh, with their children. As I've said, men uh, sometimes don't naturally connect. They've got to plan for it uh, and be more intentional about it. Women have this blessing. Uh, uh, they call it um, uh, the connection or intimacy hormone uh, that causes them to reach out to friends and when they're stressed to connect with other people and reach out for uh, nature and relationships. Uh, but as men, it's not as natural as we would want it to be. And so we've got to naturally connect with the children. You see, mothers have already connected with their children right from the womb and breastfeeding and all of that. Uh, and as far as if we are not intentional in doing it, it's not going to happen. So number one, the first habit and probably the foundational one of highly effective fathers is to intentionally connect with their children, connect with their boys, connect with their girls, uh, connect with their children so that they may bring them up. Connect in such a way that it builds trust uh, and creates intimacy or closeness uh, so that then out of that relationship, then you can do a lot of other things. Fathering is first a relationship. It's not just an activity, it's a relationship. And that would need intentional connection between dad uh, and the children. Uh, those of you who read the Bible, uh, I love a, a, a verse in um, Malachi chapter five and uh, chapter four, verse six. And it talks about those last days and say society will be in a mess if the hearts of the fathers don't connect with the children and the children with the fathers. In other words, there needs to be a connection, a heart connection between fathers and the children and children uh, with their fathers. And so intentionally connects. And that could include several things you do to connect. It includes listening to them, taking time to listen to them and empathize with them so that you connect. It includes creating habits and doing activities uh, that will make you connect, like around the dinner time, you know, eating dinner together and coming up with quizzes uh, or questions, sometimes around the dinner with the children, I come up with a question and say, okay, today, uh, this is what we're going to do, or, or uh, just a statement. So we want to go around each one of us and we'll, we'll say, what do you like most about this family? Or who is your best friend? Uh, what's your fear during this COVID-19? Uh, you know, just with making dinner time, useful time of connection as you eat. Uh, so create habits around dinner, create habits of a walk. Uh, today I walked with my children for about 30 minutes and I enjoyed it. And those are ways of connecting. Uh, where I am, there are not many people, so we could walk uh, and not be in public necessarily. Uh, games that you do together, sometimes we do some games, sometimes we watch and movies with the children and discuss the lessons we learn out of it. Uh, so as a dad being available and approachable and then connecting through activities and conversations approachable and available. You know, you could be at home and that children never come to you. Some of us are dads like that who are home, but nobody went near to them if you knew what was good for them, for you, because you could get hurt just for looking at your dad in a, in a, from a wrong angle. Yeah, I'm sure you understand what I mean. Some of those dads were not very approachable. They were there. Uh, it's like a boss who is harsh and tells you, the door is always open, uh, but nobody walks into it because if you walk into it, you will be in a big trouble. Uh, you know, you will regret why you walked in there. So let's not be like that as dads uh, who become uh, very hard to approach. And you know, some of those dads uh, that we grew up around, that whenever they checked in, we all checked out and pretended we had been asleep for a while. Uh, be a dad who is approachable, uh, who is sociable, who is reachable, who can joke with the children, who can play with them, uh, but also who can exercise um, authority and father them. So habit number one is highly effective fathers intentionally connect with their, their children. Number two, they patiently correct, patiently correct. 
And I chose that word very carefully because discipline is supposed to happen because as fathers, uh, just like mothers, we're supposed to bring correction and discipline, which is a building of values upon our children. It's not punishment. Uh, it's, it's not abuse. Uh, it's supposed to be something we do to correct and build our children. And we need to get to that place where we uh, patiently correct them uh, with patience with patience. In fact, it's interesting, Paul, uh, uh, in the Bible, uh, wrote to fathers and several times he told them, fathers, there's something you should not do. Don't exasperate your children. Don't push them to a corner. Don't be angry against them. Impatient with them until you push them to a corner and they've got to rebel because of your behavior towards them. What you were saying, dads, it's more likely for you not to be patient with your children than to be. And that's true in reality. Uh, dads just nap a lot faster than moms, generally. Uh, we just find ourselves a lot less patient uh, when our children are not getting it and doing what they need to do. And uh, we need to create a habit of being patient in correcting our children, in uh, showing loving discipline towards them, uh, talking, training them, of course, in the ways that they should go and making the rules and boundaries is clear. So by the time we're correcting them, we're not correcting them out of something they didn't ever know. Uh, you don't correct out of ignorance. You correct out of what you've already trained. So let's train them and then correct them. Not in anger. Never discipline your child or correct your child in anger. Never shout at them uh, because you're angry. And when you're angry, manage your anger and then talk to them talk to them. Because when you're angry, then you shout at them and correct them, not for them, but for you, to lash out what you're feeling, to bring it out. And, and so you don't do it right. We always advise uh, as parental counselors, never pun, uh, correct your children when you're angry, because it will be about you and not about them at that point. It's not that you're correcting them, it's that you're, uh, you know, unleashing your anger and uh, frustration uh, uh, towards them. And so be composed, be the adult in the relationship and be patient and patiently learn how to correct and not run away from correction. Uh, we train a lot of mothers and there are times that mothers say, you know, you need to talk to the fathers that they'll be involved in discipline, in correction. Many of them just don't want to get involved. Uh, they want mom to do all of that, all of the dirty work as it were. Um, uh, but dads, we need to be uh, available and involved so that we may be able to correct the children and train them well and patiently do so. Um, of course, we need to correct for change, not for punishment, as I said. Remember, it's uh, important even when kids have not done anything wrong the whole week, as a dad to meet them regularly and just see whether standards are being kept, uh, and whether they're going to sleep on time, whether the technology rules are being uh, obeyed, whether the boundaries uh, are protecting them. So create the boundaries uh, together as parents. And as a father, make sure you insist and enforce the boundaries as well. Uh, don't neglect that. Don't be passive about it. Uh, be a man who uh, has a habit of patiently correcting and instructing uh, your children. If you're joining us, we're talking about the five habits of highly effective fathers. We are, there are two down. Uh, we're going to the three, uh, the, uh, three more. Uh, I said earlier that um, um, uh, you could, uh, we're going to be launching Intentional Dad, which is going to be online uh, for five weeks. And you can go ahead if you're interested uh, to sign yourself in or sign up someone else on the link that is provided. If you have questions, type them out there. Uh, Chris and others are going to answer to you as I continue. So five habits of highly effective fathers. Number one, intentionally connects. Number two, patiently corrects. And the underlying word there is patient. Number three, purposefully calls out. I'll explain. Purposefully calls out. This is what calling out is about. You know, as fathers, we are like prophets. We get to see some things that are good in our children, and we get to call them out. We also get to see some things that are not right, and we call them out. But here I'm talking about affirmation. I'm talking about calling out the greatness of masculinity in your son. 
when your son does something really great, like he's taking care of his siblings and he's being a good leader and a servant leader, call that out and just call him and say, I just wanted to congratulate you in front of his family uh, because I saw the way you served your siblings and that's great and that's what great men do. That's calling out. You're trying to tell them that's the way to go, son. That's how great men behave. Uh, so uh, great fathers consistently, purposefully call out the man in the boy. They keep uh, training them on how to be great men and then calling them out and celebrating them. Part of calling out is also encouraging. Encourage them when they are in a bad space, when they feel discouraged, when they feel like they're not doing well. Be there alongside them and put your arm around them and, 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 and tell them what you see in them, the potential that you see in them, that you can see, that they can be great, that they will go places. There's a setback, uh, but it's only a preparation for coming back. Uh, you know, be the kind of of a father who is a, a cheerleader to your children, uh, purposefully calling them out, calling out the man in the son, and then calling out uh, the woman in your daughter. Uh, when she does something, uh, of course, a firmer beauty, a firmer character, a firmer strength, a firmer ambition, you know, affirm those things in her that are going to help her to grow, uh, to be the kind of woman she needs to be in the future. Uh, like my daughter today helped me a lot uh, technologically, and she's been helping me a lot. And I just see that in her and see a great thing. Uh, I'm going to give her a little allowance uh, around that. And I'm affirming her and encouraging her and say, uh, you know, you are very helpful and uh, you, are, you have attention to the details and you're a great person. You're growing to be a great woman. You know, that's affirmation. So purposefully calls out the positive uh, and the gender in the children, just telling them who they are and celebrating the greatness in them. It's interesting, studies, studies show uh, that a lot of women who are confident, they had a good relationship with their dad and their dad regularly called them out and told them how sharp they are and how they can take on the world and how far they could go and how pretty they were. Uh, and that gave them confidence, uh, how smart they were. Uh, the same with sons, the sons who had a good relationship with their dads and were constantly affirmed by their dads, they have a the confidence to take on the world. But if you had a dad who always told you you're useless, you don't know what you're doing, um, I pity the person you're going to marry, and then of course that dents you very badly. Uh, so fathers, purposefully call out uh, the positive in your children, uh, the positive in the home, and do that for the mother as well, for the mother of your children. Make sure you tell her uh, she's beautiful, that she's smart, that she's done well, uh, she's cooked great, uh, whatever it is, just be there to be one who affirms and purposefully calls people out in affirmation, encouragement, um, and empathy. Number four, so number one, uh, habits of highly effective fathers are intentionally connect with their children uh, through conversations uh, and through activities, intentionally building good relationship. Secondly, they patiently correct their children without anger, uh, but uh, making sure values are known, boundaries are drawn, uh, and standards are enforced uh, so that the children may grow in discipline and character. Uh, number three, they purposefully call them out encourage them and, and, and call out the gender in them, uh, the great woman in them, the great man in them. Uh, number four, they consistently care for their children. You see, true parenting is out of care, that you care for your children, uh, you love them, and you want to see the best for them. You want to see them do well in education. You want to see them uh, do well uh, in life, and you care for them to be able to provide for them to make sure that they are provided for, to make sure that they get the skills in school that they need to get for their future, to make sure when they are low, then you're alongside them, to make sure when they are uh, sick, then they get attention. You care for them, you show care in action and in words. So great fathers consistently, not once in a while, uh, not only by paying school fees, but consistently in different ways. You show care uh, to your children, provide for their material needs, 
and also uh, be attentive to their emotional needs. Uh, listen and, and hear the, what they're not saying. You know, listen to them and hear what they're not saying. Make sure you notice when they're low and be there. Come alongside and say, why are you looking low today? Uh, what's going on? Uh, get to know what's going on in school, whether they're scoring well, uh, whether they're encouraged about school, whether they're, uh, they're facing challenges, you know. Uh, care for them enough to uh, be able to look out for them uh, in every way, from education to life to emotions uh, to food, uh, whatever else. Uh, be a father who consist consistently cares uh, for your children. Number five, lastly, and continue just to uh, tell us where you're watching from and what you're hearing and where there are things that you're agreeing with. Uh, you know, let's make this interactive. So keep just typing out uh, and, and uh, you know, call some of your friends who are not with you, host a watch party and let's finish together. Number five, and lastly, uh, in five habits of highly effective fathers, uh, is that they specifically challenge their children. Specifically challenge their children. You see, as a father, you need to understand that your children are different. No child is like another. Uh, the fact that they're boys and girls that makes them different. Boys behave differently from girls. You need to understand that and it's one of the topics we talk a lot about uh, in um, uh, intentional dads, uh, that uh, gender plays a very big role in what children become and how they hear. Um, uh, so you need to understand those dynamics. Uh, you need to understand that girls want you to look them in the face when you talk with them and they want you to be attentive. You need to understand boys many times they want you to take a walk together and do some activities together to connect well. So you need to understand specifically challenge your children according to their gender, but also according to their personality and differing needs. Every child has a different personality. Uh, for example, my son is very loud and he makes a lot of noise in the house. And he just one person who likes to be noticed and, and likes to be life of the party. Um, my small daughter is quiet and likes to hang out uh, with the dogs and play with them, uh, but is also very keen and very um, uh, likes arranging the books and doing some things around there. Uh, and uh, her motivation is very different from the son uh, and my firstborn daughter as well. So understanding the different personalities and needs and even love languages for your children. We talk about the five love languages uh, that uh, all of us have, and you need to understand that for your children as well. Uh, some of them feel loved when you give them a gift. My little girl is like that. She always would ask me, Dad, what have you brought us? Uh, that's how she feels loved. Uh, there's some who feel very loved uh, when you spend time with them. The others who feel very loved uh, when you hug them and touch them. Uh, like my firstborn daughter, she likes to hug me and just hold me uh, and things like that. So you need to understand your children, the needs that they have, uh, the personalities that, that they have, and bring them up according to that, and then challenge them in that as well. Empower them. Give them the skills to succeed well in their personality and uniqueness. Empower them. Give them the skills. You see, the greatness of a dad is what your children become when you're not there is that you empowered them to do well in life without you uh, and after you uh, so that they will have uh, be empowered to have the skills to be able to do life well. So teach them model standards, give them skills, challenge them uh, to dream big, uh, to go for uh, big dreams, uh, to uh, know that they can achieve uh, whatever it is God has planned for them and that they dream about. Uh, so give them possibilities, open their eyes, to see the possibilities out there. Uh, challenge them when it comes, when they look lazy or they have a bad attitude toward work or things like that. You're there as a dad to challenge your children to be the best that they could be. Make it specific and make it regular. Uh, so specifically challenge your children. 
Well, we have said a lot, and I think I want to uh, always uh, almost uh, bring us to a close by saying, you know, as a father, once you connect, uh, uh, once you appreciate the relationship that you have, and I want to appreciate the dynamics of fathering are, are different. There's some of you don't live with your children, so you have to do this from a distance. Uh, there's some of you are separated maybe with the mother of the children, and there are some challenges in between. Uh, some of you don't spend as much time with your children and maybe you walk out of town. Whatever the case, I think what we are saying, uh, there's nothing like uh, a perfect dad. They are only committed dads. Dads who are committed to play their roles. Uh, play their roles and make sure uh, that to the degree that they can, uh, they're, 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 they're engaged fathers. And that's the challenge we're giving ourselves because uh, in fathering, we get to bless the society. We get to create better citizens. We get to reduce the population of prisons. Uh, we get to have uh, more affirmed and confident children walking around. Uh, we get to have better values going the rounds uh, on the roads and in schools and in banks. Uh, you see, we play an important role and we need to do it uh, with uh, strength and grace. Five habits of highly effective fathers. I want to summarize and now tell you a little bit more about intentional dads and, and then I'll let you have a good night. Uh, so number one, uh, great fathers intentionally connect. They have a habit of intentionally through activities, uh, through conversations and different ways they get to connect with their children, intentionally connect. Number two, patiently correct, uh, that they don't blow up the fears um, and give up on their children. They patiently correct them uh, by drawing boundaries, explaining that to them, uh, encouraging them to keep the standards patiently correct. Uh, number three, they purposefully call out. Uh, they continue to affirm, to bless, uh, to call out the man in their uh, son and call out the woman in their daughter. Uh, number four, they consistently care. Uh, so they parent out of care, they father out of care uh, for material. They want their, their children to be provided for materially, uh, emotionally, educationally. Uh, in many ways, they just want their children to be cared for. And lastly, specifically challenge them. Uh, modeling and setting standards, empowering them and giving them the skills that they need, uh, showing them possibilities in life, uh, challenging them when they're lazy or they have attitudes that don't help them, and uh, cheering them on to go and get whatever it is God created them for. Well, uh, having uh, talked through that, let me just uh, briefly talk about intentional dads and invite as many of you as uh, are able to. Uh, so right away, we're gonna be launching intentional dads is a course we do for fathers. Um, uh, I love this uh, and I'm passionate about it because I really believe a society is only uh, as secure and to a big degree, um, uh, as good in terms of character as, as its fathers. Uh, and so uh, what we do with intentional dads um, is uh, we, we are preparing and encouraging fathers to, to be two things, good dads, uh, that means dads of good value, of good uh, character, uh, loving dads, so good dads, but number two, good at being dads. And so we give them the understanding, the information, and the skills of fathering. Sometimes you have good intentions as a father, but you don't have the skill. You don't have the understanding. You don't have the information that helps you know how to deal and connect with your daughter or son. Uh, and so those are the two things we do. Uh, and we have several topics that we go through. In fact, this is a book uh, that we get to use, Intentional Dad. Uh, I, I think you can see it uh, right there. Intentional dad uh, is what we have and what we use, uh, skills for effective fathering. And uh, uh, these are some of the topics that we get to go through. Number one, dad in the mirror. We begin by talking about you as a dad and saying, you know, the way you were brought up, the way you are fathered, some of the things you've gone through, they affect the way you see life and see your children. So you need to focus on you and see yourself in the mirror uh, because wh whoever you are, uh, it, it comes out. It colors the way you parent. Uh, 
the way you father. Uh, and so that in the mirror, we focus on you first. The number two, we talk about the five star general. We talk about uh, the five piece of a father, that a father needs to be present, provided, protector, uh, those five piece. And we talk about these are the clear roles that you play every day uh, towards your children. Number three, we talk about the six building blocks of character. Um, so we say, these are the six things you need to train your children to have so that they'll have great character and competence before they leave your house. And so I love that because we, we talk about different things, being able to relate with other people. We talk about reality, how they handle reality, different things. So the six building blocks, we get to talk about that. And we talk about raising girls as a topic and how girls are different and unique and how to understand them, how to connect with them as they grow in the different stages of life. Uh, we talk about fathering sons and our sons are different as well. And during the different stages of life, they need different ways of connection and emphasis of fathering. Uh, we talk about securing the perimeter. We talk about the dangers out there that are out to get your children, whether it's in technology or it's pornography or it is uh, crime uh, or it is drugs. We talk about those things and say, how do you secure your family? Uh, secure the perimeter, as we hear in the movies. Um, secure the perimeter, make sure evil doesn't come in. How do you do that as a dad? How do you, uh, what do you need to understand so that your children don't get eaten up by the world uh, uh, right under your nose? Uh, so uh, securing the perimeter, being a protective father. Then we talk about sex education and technology management. Of course, this is big, uh, very sexualized society that we live in. Uh, we need to know how to educate our children around sex and some of the things to talk about and how to answer the question that they get to ask and not take off um, or cover our faces. Uh, and then technology management, how to guide them as well and some of the rules that you need to enforce in the home around technology so that technology doesn't blow them up, it becomes a need to build them, not to destroy them. And lastly, we talk about finishing well. How do you as a dad ensure by the time you're done, you said, I did my best. I have not been perfect, uh, but I was committed and I was involved and eventually release your children well. So those are the topics we go through. This is a book we're going to be going through. So those of you who are signing up right now, uh, you're going to be getting this book, this manual. Uh, if you're far out of Nairobi, we're going to send it to you on email uh, and you're going to use that. Uh, if you're nearer here, then you're going to get a copy, a uh, hard copy, and we'll organize how you get that. Uh, Chris is going to be talking to you. Uh, so just continue, sign up on that link provided there, ask any question there as I come towards the close. How is this going to run? virtually. Now that COVID-19 has locked us in, uh, we have decided we'll continue to learn. Uh, and this is a good uh, thing for some of you have been busy. As fathers, you have not been able to come to class and we brought class to you. And so what we're going to be doing once you sign up, uh, we're going to be having Zoom groups uh, or online groups. And each group is going to be led by uh, two people. So we have two facilitators who have already done this program, Intentional Dad, and they're going to be leading a group of eight to 12 men. Uh, and they're gonna be meeting you regularly once every five days. Uh, and uh, you're gonna be discussing the topic. So once you get your manual either online or physical, then you're gonna to begin to read. Um, for example, you're going to begin, excuse me, uh, you're going to begin reading Dad in the Mirror. There are readings for every day, four or five readings every week. And you're going to read that. And by the time you end, uh, then your leader is going to call you in and you're going to have a time together, discuss how that applies to each one of you, what you learn together, discuss each other's experiences and learn from one another and become a community of fathers that is growing together. We're going to have a plenary talk. We always, before the session, have a plenary talk. Uh, so again, myself and a few other people will be doing a plenary talk to you, like I'm doing right now, on each of the topics uh, for 15 or 17 minutes uh, before you begin the group discussions. And just summarize and give your own experience and our own challenges so that you understand from that. We'll be very real with each other. Uh, and then after that, you go into discussion in the groups uh, in the lead of your leaders.
uh, of the, the small group leaders. So that's how we're going to do it. Um, uh, there are eight lessons, but we're going to be doing them in five weeks. So we're going to be having a discussion of, of a topic every five days. Uh, but you're going to get more details about that. Right now, I just wanted to let you know that um, you can learn a lot more. You may be a good dad, uh, you may be a struggling dad, uh, but all of us need to grow as fathers, uh, including myself. There's a lot more to keep learning. And I just want to invite you to sign up right away. Sign up some of your uh, men that uh, you are together uh, so that then you have a company of men uh, in your boys group, uh, the men that you hang out with so that all of you can learn together, discuss together. In fact, if you bring up a team of eight, nine men, we'll allow you to be one group and just give you leaders uh, to lead you. And so talk to your friends, talk to your boys, talk to your neighbors, and let's do this together. Men, we've got to grow ourselves. We cannot continue to complain that the woman is empowered, the girl child is empowered. Uh, when other women have taken responsibility to empower themselves and to empower girls, uh, we don't need to complain. We just need to do it, empower ourselves, uh, grow ourselves, learn together uh, in the company of each other so that we'll be a community of fathers that will not let down our society and that will leave a legacy into the next generation. Let's be those kind of men who take initiative and do what we need to do so that we build ourselves. So sign up, sign up to someone else and feel free to share what we have shared. Uh, once we are done, it's going to be on our, our YouTube channel, Transform Nations. It's going to be here as well on Facebook Live. Uh, and, and you're going to be able to share with other people. Let's spread the word. Uh, let's spread the word so that we build the level and quality of fatherhood in our nation. In fact, I have a great passion and vision uh, that has been, uh, 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 you know, halted and slowed down by COVID, uh, but it's going to come back again. Uh, I have a vision of us in the next three years, uh, training one million fathers across the nation. I believe if one million fathers at least had a, a conscious, uh, a conversation to awaken their consciousness on their importance as fathers to be a blessing or a curse and to play their five roles uh, that I mentioned earlier, I believe we have fathers like that, a million of them in this country, uh, enlightened, encouraged, and challenged in that way, I believe the quality of our nation would uh, would rise uh, tremendously. And so let's join up together. Let's do this cause. And let's continue to do a campaign for fatherhood across this nation. I'm glad that you've listened. If you have any question, please feel free to ask us and we're going to get back to you. For fathers who are struggling, for fathers who feel like you've already messed up, it's never too late. We've had some fathers who have been in, who have come to the class and they are grandfathers. They are in their eighties. Uh, so it doesn't matter how uh, long you've been a father. Maybe you're preparing to be a father. Your wife is pregnant uh, or maybe you have uh, grandchildren. It really doesn't matter. It's never too late. There are some grandparents who have come and say, I've learned so much. I've now seen the mistakes I did uh, towards my children. That's why I had issues with them. I want to go back and correct them before my time is done. Uh, so whatever your age, uh, whatever your situation, uh, whatever your status right now, married or not, uh, but you're a father, uh, this is a good place where we don't judge each other. We come together to learn together and challenge one another. So again, let's do this. Let's grow our fatherhood uh, in us and around us and let the, let the country of Kenya be the better for it. Thank you very much for listening and for joining us. Uh, and uh, this week, uh, from tomorrow, we'll start distributing the books uh, because by Wednesday, we want this class to be going and we want to uh, get on in the next five weeks uh, before COVID lets us out uh, because we believe it's going to lift up. Uh, before we go back to work or to class or to wherever our duties are, uh, let's do this together and let's learn how to be good fathers. Hey, before I go, fathers in your homes, this is a stressful time. Uh, some of you are facing a lot of stress being with children at home. Uh, it's hard to be a teacher and a father and a husband and several other things at the same time in your home. 
What I want to encourage you to do, if you feel stressed, talk to someone else. Uh, don't meet out violence against your children or their mother. Uh, let's not be that. A uh, person who talks through violence um, uh, is a coward, is a person who is not able to reason, or is not able to manage himself. And when you cannot manage yourself, uh, then something is wrong then you're not uh, strong enough. Uh, someone who is strong enough can manage their emotions, can uh, control themselves, uh, can reason out issues. They don't need to be violent. So let's be a blessing in our homes and not a curse during this time. Let's do what is right. May the Lord bless you. And I'd love to close just with a, a blessing, a prayer for uh, all of you guys. Almighty God, we're just grateful that you've given us a privilege to be fathers, to raise up children who will represent us, or who will reflect the values and skills that we're going to give them in a generation we will not even be part of. And so we thank you for the privilege. We pray that you forgive us where we've done it wrong and hurt our own children and others. And we pray that you will help us to be able to do this right. Uh, Lord, to be the kind of fathers who will be a blessing like you as our dad. Uh, you've just been uh, good to us. You've been present with us and helped us even during this difficult time of COVID. So help us to be good dads and good at being fathers to our children. And as we start this program of intentional dads, may it be a blessing to a lot more people in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. And may you have a good night and we will see you in class. Uh, those of you who have already done uh, intentional dads, talk to your friends uh, and some of you come over and let's facilitate and let's take this farther than it could go. God bless you and thank you very much.